On this episode of Country Boy Gas Garage, we're finally digging into this 59 El Camino. So let's go. Welcome to another episode of Country Boy Gas Garage. My name's Jason, and in this episode, we're gonna be digging into this 1959 Chevy El Camino. Well, what we need to do is dig through there and find out what parts we already have and make an inventory of what's in there. And then we can go through the car and check out the motor and start making a parts list of the parts that we do need to get this thing to run and drive. Now, I already made a video on what we have here and where we got it from, so make sure you check that out if you haven't already. But uh, the last couple of videos I kind of jumped onto the garage build. We got this thing insulated and wired with lights and outlets now. So if you've been watching those videos, I appreciate it. Now we still have to build the doors, which I've got the lumber to that drying over here. It's pretty wet lumber, so we'll give that a couple days to dry and then we'll build these doors. But in the meantime, we're gonna dig into this El Camino and see what parts we already have for it and what we still need. So let's go check it out. Well, as you can see, the bed is this full of parts. Uh, most of them are for the El Camino. I've got parts for the Nova and some other stuff in here as well. Um, but we're going to go through all of this and see exactly what we got in here and kind of uh, inventory the parts we have. Um, get rid of the stuff that doesn't belong to this car. Um, and then that way we can kind of see what we still need. You know, I believe we got most of all the trim. There might be a couple pieces um, that we're missing on the, the tailgate. Um, but to be sure, we'll dig through all that and see what we have. Um, the car didn't even come with the, the belt line trim or the fender ornaments, um, but I was able to purchase those separate, um, which are hard to get, so that was nice. And you could see that these lower quarters look a little wrinkly. I think they have fiberglass and Bondo in here. Um, yeah, I can see remnants of fiberglass, it looks like. So this has uh, been gone through once, so I, I imagine that uh, now it's pretty rusty up under there. And there's not much that can be saved. Um, it's bubbling up here. But yeah, down here, look. Um, yeah, there's like uh, fiberglass or something in here. So eventually we'll have to replace these quarters, um, but uh, my plan is just to get this thing running and driving first, um, and we'll roll with the patina and the roughness for a while, but uh, first things first, let's uh, get this thing running and driving, which it came with no motor, um, but they gave me this motor with it, um, they claimed that it came out of the car. Um, but I don't believe so, but we'll dig into this as well and see what kind of working order and condition this is. You know, it might be locked up at this point. It's been sitting for years on a stand, you know, no spark plugs, no exhaust. So moisture's just been getting in there and no distributor. Uh, hopefully I didn't lose any garbage down in there. Yeah. So we'll have to kind of pull this apart and see what we're working with there. And down here on the floor is the transmission. This has been kicked around on the floor for a while, so hopefully it's still good. And some starters. It did come with some headers and the bell housings there, too. Um, we don't have the original stock grill, which I'd like to get, but this bar grill will do us for now. There's a little whammy down at that end. And, uh, well, I do know off the bat one of the first things we are going to need is headlight housings. Now I've got the buckets that go in each one, but this housing that uh, holds the buckets is just toast. I mean, there's not much. I mean, we might be able to make that work, but uh, they're not very cheap to replace those even because everybody needs them. But yeah, you can see where the Bondo has been squished through rust holes from the outside. And uh, yeah, evidence there, this has all been puttied over and repainted at one time. So I imagine there's a lot of rust damage. But 
we'll go ahead and start by digging through all these parts and a lot of the stuff I ordered five years ago when I bought the car I've kind of lost track of what we have I mean I know we have a brand new radiator hopefully it's still good there in that box and uh, along with some brake parts and um, radiator shroud uh, clutch and pressure plate flywheel um, so let me get you set up on the tripod so I can kind of uh, start digging through this You know, I think I want to open this up and take a look at it and just see what condition it's in. Well, like I was saying, I ordered this about five years ago off Classic Industries. It's been in the box the whole time. But Big old spiders. They're everywhere. Spider web. Get off me. But the radiator looks brand new still. Oh yeah. All right, that's still perfect condition. So we got a brand new large radiator. I forget what I paid for it, but it wasn't cheap. Well, I'll go ahead and put it back in the box so I don't wreck it. All right, that's one big ticket item that we don't have to worry about. Now, some of this is just stuff I stored in here, just miscellaneous junk. Some old lights. Uh, it's kind of cool. It's an antique Fram filter and housing. I was going to put this on the bus. Uh, we'll save it. Yeah, this is an extra speaker cover for the dash. Um, we don't need it, but it's extra. Now I believe these are the clips for the side trim. I did buy new ones though. An old gas cap to a Ford tractor. I-beam switch. Now here's the headlight buckets. Um, you know, the, the littler headlights fit in there and then these go into the housings that are trashed. So we got good headlight buckets and rings. We just need those housings. And then these are the fender ornaments or fender spears. Um, can't tell if these are original or repop. It might be original, it would be nice. Aha, this piece is uh, kind of a, a thought after piece, a trim. It's the paint separator for the El Caminos. Um, here, let me show you. So my car still has both of them on there. So this is an extra one for the driver's side. And uh, if you have a two-tone El Camino, then you got a paint separator piece of trim that went right there. If it was all one solid body color, they didn't have this. Um, but yeah, we got an extra driver's side one. Looks like it's got one little ding on it right there. Um, but yeah, extra parts. We could sell these. Uh, 
to get money to buy the parts that we do need, so we'll hang on to that. I'll set it here with these uh, vendor ornaments. Um, we do have a part number in there, but they look pretty clean to be original. It makes me think that they're repop, but I don't know for sure. Um, and this is, yeah, this is the box that uh, came with the car, and there's a gas pedal. Here's a piece of, well, part of a trim. I do have a few extra pieces of trim stashed away somewhere. Um, we got uh, maybe a reverse light, or license plate light, probably. Oh yeah, these were the windshield wiper bezels i believe um i don't have the wiper arms but i believe that these uh fasten to the base of the wiper arms um so i have to research that a little bit you know this is my first 59 chevy so and they put this these bags in this box so tailgate chrome so they labeled some of this stuff that's nice with the hardware Headlight bucket, the hardware there. Some of those are empty. And PVC valve. And it looks like maybe a condenser. Helix? Well, no, I don't know what the other stuff in here. Hmm, a little piece of trim. Go somewhere. Yeah, I believe that's 59 dash trim. Um, don't know. I don't think that comes. This is this. I think this is off of Nova. That's all that's in this box. Yeah, a few good parts. An extra piece of trim. We'll go ahead and uh, set this one aside and we'll keep digging in there. I'll have to find somewhere to store all this stuff, probably up on the loft that we just built. Yeah. There's a new headlight ring if we need it. I think I bought this for the bus. Okay, I got this box free off Craigslist. Let me show you. Now I got this box of parts free off Craigslist, except for the Nova close ratio steering box that's actually brand new it's just been rusting from sitting out here so it's got surface rust on it but that's new i need to install that in the nova but i did get this off uh, craigslist for free it was the front suspension and brake parts for a 1957 chevy um i guess he had updated the disc brakes and stuff so this stuff was all nearly brand new looking when i got it, it had no rust on it and it was painted but it's been sitting out here for years in a box and i don't know if i could even use this on the 59 but for free I figured I'd take it but I mean it came with new springs it had uh, spindles uh, backing plates the hubs the drums all the shoes to the brakes all the brake components um, both wheel cylinders and a master cylinder all in like great running condition um, but it's been sitting out here rusted, and I don't even know if I could use it on this car or not, but I, I grabbed it up in case we could. So I'll pull this out of here, and uh, we got some more bins up there we'll dig through, and all the trim. Let's see what we got. We got the radiator shroud all sandblasted and powder coated. We got a new old stock a headlight. It's not a T3, it's just a GE. 
So. Oh yeah, a box of parts that for the bus that were wrong parts I ordered. Uh, these all need to get shipped back to Chuck's Trucks for credit for new parts. Yeah, I wasn't sure what I needed as I was ordering them, so some of these are extra or were the wrong parts, so we'll send those back. All right, brake parts. Well, these aren't even opened. Uh, new master cylinder for the El Camino. All right. Yeah, new wheel cylinders and shoes. Can't tell if they're front or back yet, but there's a set. Yeah, set of Edderbrock intake gaskets. Yeah, another set of brake shoes. So either front or rear. All right, what we got here is a glove box liner that I've stuffed full of parts. That's some of the older trim. And some pieces I purchased more recently. A new ignition and door lock kit. So I believe these go on the fenders. This is on the hood. Okay, this is a headlight kit. New headlight pigtails and all the mounting hardware. Oh yeah, a whole bag of J-nuts. I guess that's what they're called. And a whole bunch of those. Classic Industries. A bunch of speed nuts. Rear axle flange gaskets. Hmm. Uh, 59 and 60 molding clips. So, yeah, these will hold all the bed trim on. And some tie rod adjusters. And we got another uh, wheel cylinder, a rear, and some more brake shoes. Now, some of these might be for the Nova, I guess. I've got lots of pairs here. Yeah, idler arm assembly for the Nova, pitman arm, and a new fuel pump. So I've got just parts for both vehicles mixed together in here. Some of the clutch parts for the 59. Looks like a windshield wiper switch. Um, must go the 59, I don't know. Oh, yeah, we got uh, tail light sockets. Upper ball joints, lower ball joints. This is, uh, yeah, the ball joints and front suspension parts for the Nova. Another set of tie rod adjusters. Tie rod in. So, set of tie rod in. A drum brake hardware kit. 
Yeah, some outer and inner tie rods for the Nova sway bar link ends. A pair of those for the Nova. U joints for the 59. That other rear wheel cylinder. Transmission mount. Yeah. I believe this goes to the Nova. That's a Turbo 350 transmission mount. The front wheel cylinders. Pair. And uh, you know, these are the inner tie rods for the Nova. So we got a bin full of new parts for the Nova and the 59. All right, I ordered a flywheel from Jegs. Let's check it out. And it came with some new ARP bolts, some motor mount bolts, and we got a, a flywheel shim and some thread locker. No, sorry, those first bolts are pressure plate. These are the flywheel bolts. There you go, brand new pressure plate from Jegs. All right, a brand new clutch and pressure plate. Well, new pilot bushings and throwout bearings as well. Well, these are the, the side trim that go along the bed, the long pieces of trim. And this one's like in mint condition. This one's perfect. Now, those are super expensive to buy. Luckily, we have them all. I was able to purchase these ones from an old timer um, that had been holding them for probably for 10 years or so. And, you know, this one is pretty good shape except for the end. It does have some damage, but it would be good enough to run. And we got the some of the bed trim. These are all four corners. And then these two are the back corners here. Yeah. Some more bed trim. These are the side panels. Over there. And over here. Now they're not in the, the best condition, but you know, a couple holes and Couple dings and dents, but definitely uh, better than nothing. The other bed trim that goes along the, the tailgate. Yeah, two more pieces of that side trim. Uh, these are the two that go on the door. These are the doors. And then the two last uh, pieces for the side trim to go up on the front fenders. You know, not too bad. This one's got a little bit of damage. It's not the straightest, but it's definitely workable. So we got all the side trim, all the bed trim inside. Now we need the fin. Now we need the trim that goes around the fins. So yeah, so we got the long pieces that go along the outside fins. Right there. Uh, these are the shorter pieces that go towards the front of the bed. And then we got the corner piece, outside corner piece, no, I thought I had both sides, but I can only see the driver's side fin trim, I'm not seeing the passenger side trim, I thought I had it though, so hopefully we do, because that's going to be a hard piece to find. And this is uh, 
the it goes on the tailgate, the last piece of that bed trim. Other than this corner, we're missing that corner right now, and I swear we had it, so hopefully that turns up. Um, I got an extra piece of trim here. Um, actually, this is off a 62 Super Sport Impala. Um, it's just an extra piece I have. Better save it. So yeah, we got all the trim, minus that one corner so far, and then the two pieces of trim to go on the is it the paint separator on the tailgate? Um, so there's a couple little pieces that we're missing. There's some more parts up here. Let's see what we got. License plate. Now we got some extra wiring and the old set of blinkers from the bus when we did the wiring on the bus. With some useful stuff. We'll save it. Here we got 1959 Chevy door frame weather stripping. And we got 1970 Nova door frame weather stripping as well. And we got two new leaf springs for the Nova. Eventually we'll get these in on the Nova. All right, that's all the parts that I had stored in the bed. And it's pretty rusty back here. Let me kind of show you, you know, what they call this a smuggler's compartment. But that shows you down to the frame and the floorboards. And you can see how far gone they are. But the frame itself looked good. It's just all the sheet metal is toast. There's some uh, patch panels up in the front that somebody's installed. But, uh, yeah. Let's take a look inside and see. I think there's some parts in here I got too. And uh, yeah, I think I pointed out last time that that's uh, a 59 Impala stainless steel dash trim that somebody's put on here. And uh, 59 Impala door panels. Uh, this one I think is behind the back seat and it was a little rotted, but hopefully we can make it work. I just threw a blanket over the old tattered seat. But uh, yeah, so we got some more parts back here. Let's see. Uh, this is just some window tint. Um, what is this? Leather stripping. Uh, I think this is for the Nova, I think. Let me take a look. It might be the window fuzzies. Alright, what do we got in here? Some hardware. Yeah, I think this is... Pretty sure this is for the Nova. Um... Uh, window trim and window fuzzies, the win the door fuzzies for the window tracks. I'll keep that in there so we don't lose the hardware. Made in the USA. And we got some uh, kick panels. I believe these are for the El Camino as well. Yeah, 5960 um, kick panels. And uh, let's see, oh yeah, we got some... Uh, door panel backing board. I bought two of those so I could try to save the door panels. Maybe at least the, the one passenger side one, I can maybe put a new cardboard door card inside the door panel and save it. So set those aside there. Yeah, there's the old door panel for the passenger side. That's in pretty rough shape. Oh yeah, dang. Well, Hopefully we can save it. Let's pull it out of here. Oh man. Yeah, that thing's in pretty rough shape. That's a 1959 Chevy Impala door panel. You know, as rough it as it is, if we could put a new door card and fix that, that would be nice. Let's see what else back here. Um, another box full of hardware, um, battery hold down, bunch of fender bolts, yeah, 
fender washers. The whole front end. Is this for the Nova? Yeah. So this is a 68 through 74 Nova front end fastener kit. So just all the front end sheet metal hardware. Um, there's that with the Nova parts. I guess that's about it. I thought that piece of trim would have been back here somewhere. Pretty interesting. A carpet kit. Some nice carpet. Doesn't look too bad in here. Looks like, oh yeah, there's been some more fiberglass repair. Like you see outside, they've done some uh, fiberglass work in here, trying to save it. So yeah, we got a nice little uh, haul of parts to get started with. Um, also, let's not forget all the parts I got from Springfield Auto Recyclers before he shut down. Like these uh, bed panels, uh, they go on the inside of the bed that I was missing. Um, we got all those, including a bunch of miscellaneous spare parts, hubs and drums, spindles. Um, and we got those rear quarters. They're in rough shape, but if we need anything off those, we have them. I also got uh, a roof. Um, I don't think we need a roof for ours, but uh, that might be for sale or we'll find a use for it somehow. Um, yeah, thanks to Chuck at Springfield Auto Recyclers um, for those parts, as well as most of this stuff out here in my bone yard. And lots of spare parts and future projects there. Now we still don't know how the wiring is on this or if that motor and transmission is going to be usable. So we're going to have to tear into that next and kind of see what we're working with. Now I'm going to go ahead and pop the hood and brace that up and kind of see in there what we're missing as well. Alright, got the hood popped. Now well, I know I'm missing the hood hinges and springs so that's something we're gonna have to put on the list. Um, now it's got dual exhaust with ram horns and glass packs down there. Um, I see it's still got the drive line. The steering's all hooked up still. It's all like the electrical's all complete just disconnected from the motor so they can pull the motor out. Now it looks like all the clutch and shift linkages are there. Um, you know, we're probably going to have to get this thing jacked up and on block so I could take a good look underneath. Um, look at the suspension components a little better. Take a look at that rear end. But it looks like it's mostly all here. Just the missing the motor and tranny, which well, I believe this is the original transmission from the car. Hopefully it's in working order. Um, and then we got the Chevy 350 that we're going to have to tear into and take a closer look at as well. Uh, if that's in running condition, we'll you know, give it a little once over, new gaskets and seals, and get it running and put it in here. So next, why don't I... Uh, Maybe try to get some air in these tires and we get some uh, clearance under here and I could roll my jack under there and try to get this thing up on blocks. So that's what we'll do next. Let's get these tires aired up. And I started digging around here in the bed sides and I found that other corner trim that we we're missing. That's nice. I knew I had it. It just uh, mounts right up on here on the corners. Yeah. And this trim is all in pretty good shape. Um, so uh, we'll get all those pieces in order, clean them up, and uh, see which ones need to be repaired. And we'll do our best to straighten out some of that trim. Um, I do know somebody, it might cost a little bit of money, but we could have it professionally straightened if we need to. But I think we can knock out the few dings and dents that it does have. And some of them are partially painted, and we'll have to figure out if we're going to paint the inside of those and what color and all of that. Well, I'm going to drag out the air compressor and uh, we'll try to fill up these tires. Well, hopefully they hold air. Alright, let's do it. Okay, well this wheel looks the worst, so let's start with this one. Let's see if it'll even take the air.
Yeah, it's working. All right. Well, here we go. Right, guys well we got her up off the ground you know enough that we could uh, get the wheels off and take a look underneath and see what's going on under there now both rear wheels are off the ground and the driveline disconnected and they seem locked I think the brakes are disconnected as well so my suspicion is that the either the axle bearings or that center section is rusted up but uh, I guess I should just pull those wheels off now so we can get a closer look under there and check out the brakes and the suspension. Yeah, so let me uh, get these wheels popped off and we'll take a closer look. All right, well, I went ahead and uh, soaked these lug nuts and these center hubs up with some PB Blaster. It's pretty rusty in here. Uh, hopefully those all come loose without fighting me too much. Yikes. Guys, when I say there's spiders everywhere, I mean spiders everywhere. Uh, they all went running mostly when I pulled that off, but yikes. Well, upon first inspection, I did notice that this uh, rear wheel uh, is missing a stud on this hub. But uh, yeah, pretty rusty, but it's not horrible. Um. I'll get a light up under here and we'll start taking a look and seeing how the suspension's looking and take a look at these brakes. Maybe I'll pull these drums off. And the exhaust is kind of hanging down there. Some blue glass packs. But, uh, yeah. Alright, I'll get a light and start pulling these drums off and take a look at these brakes. We can climb underneath there with the light and kind of look at the floorboards and the frame and Make sure we're not missing anything. Hopefully most of those spiders are gone. Well, not all of them. There's still a few left. One of these wolf spiders, I think, is what we have here. They are everywhere and they get huge. So I guess I'm going to climb up underneath here. Aye. 
I don't know, I've already had these rear drums off before a couple years ago. Hopefully they come off fairly easy. Oh, yeah. Oops. Well, to say there's Bondo is putting it lightly. So I just fell off. Oops. Well, I can tell these are loose. I'll grab my gloves and put the camera down so I can use both hands and we'll get these drums off. And it feels like it could be the brake still. There we go. I really felt like the brakes were binding. Well, let's get the other side off and See if it's still locked up. Oh yeah, it's still locked up. So that's definitely either uh, axle bearings rusted up or more than likely that center section is pretty rusty. Dang. Well, let's get those front ones off. Well, that came out pretty easy. Those brakes look really good. I mean, as far as uh, not being thrashed and rusted, I mean, I still see shiny metal on the inside of the drum there. So that's not too bad. All right, one left. Yeah, not too bad. I mean, some surface rusts and spider webs to be expected, but I mean, look, the drums still shiny metal. They're not grooved up. There's still a pad left on those. Front bearings sound nice. And our little buddy stayed there through all that pounding. <clears throat> Dang it. <laughs> well, yeah, those aren't looking too bad. And we're definitely going to have to dig into this rear end a little further. Um, I don't know if we'll get to that on this video. But, uh, yeah, it's that center section's probably rusted up. So we're going to have to drop that center section out and see what we're looking at. It's probably full of water. You know? Let me get down underneath here and we'll take a closer look and see how bad the rust is from the underside. All right, well, let's get under here and take a look. You know, I got my light, hopefully that'll help. Now, right off the bat, you can see it's pretty rusty. Um, the rocker, for the most part, is fine, but I can see a couple holes right here, right before the the rear end, um, right where this big chunk of Bondo fell off. Um, and then here's the rear floor pan, and you can see where the old floor pan has rusted out, and they've, you know, crudely put in a another patch panel it looks like um, it seems to be working but uh, it's definitely seen better days under there um, you can see the exhaust the, the blue glass packs there and uh, we'll have to get up there closer to the front and see how that floorboard looks but this rear section is not looking good that's definitely going to need to be repatched at some point and then you can kind of see back here this is a behind the seat area. Um, 
right before you get to under the bed and you can see how most of this is just gone and some of that uh, which I thought was fiberglass repair but uh, I'm not really sure what's going on there they've got screen and some kind of material in there um, I think that Dalton from Pull Barn Garage has been working on this thing no just kidding I enjoy his videos check him out Pull Barn Garage um, and then we go back this way towards the, the bed of the car and, yeah. The frame's got a lot of surface rust, but I don't see it too bad anywhere. Um, same with the exhaust. The exhaust seems to be, you know, other than surface rust, doing all right. Yeah. These uh, rear brake shoes are totally gone. Um, I got all new brakes and wheel cylinders for this, so that ain't no big deal. Um, yeah, well, let's climb up underneath the front area more. I want to see what's up under there. All right, back up here into the front, and, you know, these brakes look really good, and the hub, the bearings sound fine, um, and the wheel well, it's just a surface rust. Nothing rusted too, too bad up in here. Our little friend is still just chilling there. You know, they're harmless. He's just hanging out. But, uh see here yeah. now the brake line is about to wear through right there in a little spot that's not good uh, of course we're gonna replace those anyway but in the frame you know surface rust nothing rusted through um, the floors actually don't look that bad up here I thought they were gonna be worse you know once again surface rust but no holes all right, let's go look on the other side and see how that's looking. All right, here we are on the driver's side. Well, it's looking about the same. Brakes look okay. Uh, bearings sound fine. A little tighter on that side, but sounds like they're all greased and fine. And the frame, there's some surface rust. The floors aren't too bad up here either. Just actually. No, I take that back. This is a big patch panel over here. You can see where the old floor was cut out and they put a new piece in. So this side has been patched. Doesn't look like it's ever been wrecked. Just a lot of surface rust. It looks almost like they welded up some tabs up there for like a tow bar. Yeah, there's those uh, two triangle tabs with a hole drilled through it. There's one on the other side as well. Looks like maybe they had a tow bar hooked to the front of this thing. I don't know. All right, let's climb back there and take a look towards the rear. All right, here we are towards the back. Again, under the bed, the rear driver's side. And it's pretty rough, but not as bad. Well, we got a few more friends up there. Eggs. Spiders everywhere. But. Well, and then as you get up in behind the seat area, underneath the bed, underneath that uh, spot that I call the smuggler's box, um, is this rusted through. That area, so I guess these El Caminos use the same floor pan as like a wagon. And this would be um, the, f the back seat where the f your feet would go, the rear seat feet well. Um, but with the El Caminos, they just cap it with the bed and they have that little compartment. But that area is just rusted all the way through. Um, and then uh, there's another patch panel, just like the other side on the rear underneath the seats. I guess that's where that would be. But it looks like the the floor brace over here and the rockers, the important parts anyway, are still solid. Um, so, you know, some new floor patch panels for sure. And probably some rear rear quarters, rear lower, lower quarters for sure. Um, this is all Bondo, you can tell. And, uh, but it's not too bad up towards the top. It's just these lowers. Uh, stuff coming out of the bed. <laughs>
All right. Well, that's the underside. You know, it's not great, but it could be worse, I suppose. All right. So these are the two pieces that I'm missing of trim off the tailgate. Um, just that piece right there and that piece right there. So I'll be on the lookout for those. Um, there was also one more piece of trim up front that had some uh, damage to it right here, um, which has kind of shifted the whole thing over. And these are pretty rough. Um, and these screens are pretty bent up. So, you know, some new trim up here would be nice. Um, one other thing that I noticed, I'm still not sure about, I questioned a few people and well, it's this, this hole that's been cut into the side here. You know, that's not the fuel tank because the fuel tank's back here. I was told occasionally um, they would uh, put an auxiliary tank behind the seat. Um, so I'm, a, I'm just guessing that that's what this was. Thinking at some point somebody cut this hole, added a filler neck, and maybe had a, a gas tank um, behind the seat. Um, but uh, that's something we'll probably have to try to patch. Another thing I'd like to do that I haven't done yet is uh, run the numbers just to see what it tells me. Um, what is that? G59L-134125. Yeah, here's a look down to that smuggler compartment under the floor. Again, this is would be the, the rear seat would be located if uh, this was a wagon. They use the same floor pans, but uh, with the El Caminos, they just made this little compartment and that is totally rusted out. And this back piece, which I've got an extra one of these from an old El Camino. I don't know if it's any better shape or not, though, but um, this one's been disconnected. And I guess there is a, that would be the, the rear trunk or passenger area in a wagon. Um, uh, it's been cut, cut out a bit. The rust has been cut out over there anyway, and this is just kind of flopping back here. So it's not the prettiest, but it's all doable. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Now I made a parts list, and well, it's not very long. We've got most of the parts we need. I mean, we do need uh, the hood hinges. And we need the headlight uh, housings. Um, you know, we also need the tailgate uh, paint separating trim. Not as important, but eventually we're going to need that. Might as well put the feelers out there and start looking. Um, we also need to get a few parts for the motor. Um, it doesn't have a distributor. And that carburetor is pretty junky. Um, so it'll need a few uh, parts as well. Um, so we'll start gathering those. Um, I think the, the plan is uh, the next thing we need to tackle is that rear end. We need to drop that rear end or at least the center section um, and take a closer look and see if that's going to be usable or what it's going to require to fix. Um, and then uh, after that, I guess we try to get that motor running. Once we get that motor running and get it in the transition back in the car, we'll be able to get this thing back on the road. And then all that's left at that point is cosmetic stuff. Um, so it won't be long and we'll be cruising in this field fine 59. So of course I want to give a huge shout out to all my members. Thank you. It's your monthly membership fee that's going to help keep this channel growing and keep me getting these classics back on the road. So thank you. And if you're not a member, please consider joining the membership so you could help us here. Also make sure you subscribe to the channel and you hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next video. And be sure you like, comment, and share with your friends. Until next time, peace.